Hello and welcome back to Professor Lake vs. Phoenix Wright. The last time I remember... We made a stop right here at... Waiting Hall. We managed to cross the guard post and make our way through the garrison before meeting the storyteller. Mr. Wright and I should be meeting with us for this very moment. I wonder if they were able to find out any more information about this other. Got one. <laughs> I guess the witch trial really does get the town's focus. Especially last night. On account of the offending it's been a cantabella. But I must admit you amazed me. I did? Very much. It was the first time I had ever seen a defendant fight that way before his client. For example, the way you used the word contradiction in the courtroom. It worked almost like magic. And that's only natural for a defense attorney. Until now, the defendant was always defeated the moment they stood before Inquisitor Bonham. Not only that, but in this town, there's no one who wants to befriend the witch. That's just not how a trial should be. That's not justice. I believe Professor Lincoln made the right decision giving you the grand reward. And from now on, I hope you will continue to fight for justice in court. Alright, you got it. Not in this conversation, I'd rather have it, don't you? If it's okay with you, I have something to like to do. Oh, then that means... I am the repository of all the puzzles in Labyrinth. If you come to me, you can tackle any puzzles you may have missed. 
first person to get killed from a creep they couldn't solve. Why not actually try a puzzle or two to keep your thinking flexible? So this is where all the known puzzles that we never took on go. They go right here. Wait a minute, that aggressive part. Please don't tell me that is... John Constantine! Aha, it's Constantine! The champion is yes. Wish I could say the feeling was mutual. Once bitten, try shy. That pretty much sums me up right now. Really? I think he's looking much friendlier today, if you ask me. Come on, then. Take him just once. Ah! This mutt really, really hates me! Well, well, if it isn't so good, Exactly what are you doing over there on all fours? I'd like to meet that mud owner face to face. Constantine happens to be mine, and a true nice companion he is. He didn't waste time sinking his teeth into the likes of you. What? Ah, uh, I had a hunch so Constantine really is your dog, huh? I don't admire the nerve of this guy. He just sits back and lets his dog bite people. I mean, me. Never mind that. What is it that you want to talk about? Just make it quick, sir. So you inquisitors are the ones who investigate incidents of magic in this town, aren't you? Yes, of course. If you don't mind, would we like to ask you about that episode recently with magic? There's one thing you must never forget. The Knights of the Inquisition excel at their work. All incidents of magic perpetrated by the witches are dealt with by the Inquisitors, without exception. Spoken with the usual comical 
Didn't you say so? You could have stayed of some time. Huh? How's it my fault? The High Inquisitor has put me on the spot by leaking such information to the likes of you. Well, I suppose that leaves nothing for it. I shall tell you the whole story since I do not believe in doing things by house. Please, go ahead. We're all ears. Twas three months ago that an alchemist, living near the town square, was murdered. Sorry, Mr. Bonham, but I'm kind of lost already. Is there a difference between alchemy and magic? Yeah, one is science. Alchemy is a science. The other, you know, press the digitation. When it comes to something that difficult, it will do no good asking. Huh. It seems that while the townspeople respected him, they also treated him with caution. They respected him. He used his skills to make medical concoctions and acted much like a physician. The efficacy of his cures was almost like magic. He was famous within his neighborhood. In fact, he was sometimes referred to as Dr. Bill Duke by the town's people. At any rate, it's safe to say that Sir Bill Duke was no witch. What could you say for sure? That simple. Sir Bill Duke was a man. I oh, can't really argue with that. Sir Bill Duke came to a mysterious end three months ago. A mysterious end. There were two things about his death that cannot be explained by us. Firstly, the murder scene. His body was discovered in his residence, in the study. There was a candlestick involved. Maybe a noose. His room was locked. There was no conceivable way the crime had, could have been committed, except by witchcraft. What people call a locked room mystery? Hmm. Oh, uh, nothing. So, what was the other mysterious thing? Secondly, until then, all incidents involving witches had been foretold in the story. Foretold in the story? In other words, predicted by the storyteller. However, the murder of Sir Beldic did not appear in the story. Such a thing had never occurred before. So not only was this the unsolved instant lover in his history, but it's also the one who is the only incident not to be predicted by the storyteller. This definitely sounds worth investigating. You certainly are an interesting one, sir. Huh? 
You really think you can solve this, Mr. Tudor, when the Knights of the Inquisition have been working on it for three months? Yes, you are the Knights of no quarter or order. I must say that is so confident. We won't know unless we try. You may risk becoming the target of some terrifying witch's vengeance. I don't know if I know, was it chill? Well, I suppose you may as well take a look. Who knows, you may even find something. Sir Bedoke's residence is just beyond the town square. Ask anyone around there, they'll soon point you in the right direction. Thank you, Quest of Barnum. Sir Blue Knight, I believe our courtroom battles are far from over. Until we meet again in court. I'll see you then, Inquisitor. So now we move to the Great Archive. Did you want to speak to us? I need to have a word with you both! Thanks to your turning courtroom prestige upside down, we're in a fine mess now! Finding a defendant innocent is unprecedented in the history of the witch's cult! What do you mean? I'm pretty sure innocent people are more of a problem than your precious procedure. What are you trying to say? How many glasses did you just break, sir? That girl is being held on suspicion of being the great witch Bazilla. Defending her only invites suspicion upon your own complicity. That's a false accusation. That's right! There's not a shred of evidence against Espella! <laughs> no matter what you say, she is the most likely a suspect. Anyway, if I stand around talking to you for too long, I'd invite suspicion upon myself. So from now on, I would appreciate if you would keep your distance. But you're the one who approached us. And... Hey, we say Dewey. Dewey Decimal! Oh, it makes me so mad. What's the problem? It's my neighbor. He's got this really annoying habit. Annoying habit? He just loves stomping around this place all the time. Thanks to him, all the books in my house are now a complete mess. Not to mention I can't get any sleep! That does sound like a serious problem. Can you even imagine how loud it is? Well, I, uh, not expect That's what I thought. I know you couldn't, so let me just reproduce it for you. You'll truly be amazed. Oh, I'm sure it would be. Puzzle 38. Stomp on it. Worth 40 picanuts. This house flood floorboards are in complete disarray, much to the displeasure of the owner. He has decided to stomp out the problem himself. 
Each time he stomps on a tile, the stomp tile and surrounding tiles will flip over. Tile section off by dividers will not be flipped by a nearby stomp. Stomp and arrange all the tiles. Touch the arrows on the touch screen to make the owner jump in the desired direction. Each time he jumps, the tile below him and the tiles in four cardinal directions will flip over. If there is a wall between the tiles and the character and the tiles, the adjacent tiles will not flip over. Correctly flip, all, flip over all the tiles to complete the game. So. Height. Down. Down. Right. Right. The answer here is obvious. Puzzle solved. Take that. Outstanding. The floorboards are looking great. But who knows how long, how long that was. So what did you think of that? Wasn't that stomping just ridiculous? I've had enough already. Then why don't you just pack your things and move out? Move out? Move out. Hey, that's a great idea! I'll come and stay in the night when he's dead! I can be a more help to Mr. Mysterio and I'd be surrounded by all these books! This is the greatest idea ever! It's just that you leave and go home. Well, Maya, let's just pretend like nothing ever happened and get going ourselves. Hmm. Sometimes life doesn't go quite the way you want it to, huh? Back to the shopping area. Uh, 
Spotify, you two are working at the bakery. You're goofing off. Well, not exactly. Actually, we thought we'd give up baking and try our hands at something else. That's so. Sounds like a good idea. Your bread did taste a little unusual anyway. What? You mean our bread wasn't delicious? That's strange. I mean, we use so much butter and eat that dough so hard. That's the problem. Just my opinion, mine. I prefer my bread a little more fluffy and light. Oh, really? So, uh, just how fluffy and light are we talking about? Well, maybe uh, not as fluffy and light as this puzzle. <laughs> Puzzle 20. Cloud Maze 2. Worth 50 picarats. Navigate Maya through the clouds and help her find Phoenix. Jumping in holes in the clouds will drop Maya down to the level below. Likewise, jumping on fluffy clouds will send her flying up to the level above. It's just like with, um... With, um, Luke trying to find... White team, so. Yeah, I see why it's called <laughs> Cloud Maze 2. It's just the same thing as the first one. Okay, now that I did that. Sure.
And that's it. Yay! Leave it to your friendly neighborhood spirit medium. Not too shabby, if I do say so myself. Uh, yeah. Great! That was quite the dizzying experience. Let's not do that again. Wow, impressive work. I really didn't expect you to solve that. Actually, I thought the same thing too. Well, I know. I need. I could do it. So, are you out of work? Baker's doing hang around here anyway. We're investigating an incident involving the alchemist. Do you know anything about it? Surely the Knights of the Inquisition are the ones you should ask. They could tell you a lot more than I can. You might be right about that. Even so, it's right shame someone like him could get murdered. I often went to him myself to get medicine. He was always friendly and understanding. My Sir Baltic was a good man, at least from what we've heard so far. I just hope they manage to solve this case soon. Ah, the Oscars. Right, she's been worried about you. Pedal always tells me not to talk to his strangers. What? I mean, you might. I mean, you might just grab me and take me off somewhere. You might even be a witch. Well, in that case, there's nothing we can do. See you around, kid. Oh, come on, Nick. We promised his sister. Listen, if I'm not going to... Listen. If I'm going to be suspected of being a witch's accomplice, I'd rather just hand this kid over to one of the patrol guards. Okay, okay, please, could you solve this puzzle for me? Huh? You're the kind of people who can solve puzzles, I believe in you. Puzzle 39. Train trouble. Worth 40 picarats. The little girl's favorite block train set ended up crashing and breaking apart into pieces. Luckily, the pieces for each individual carriage managed to stay separate. Carefully examine the pieces on the upper screen and choose the correctly assembled carriages for, a, for letters A through E. Which is which? Let's do this. Let's swap B. your friendly neighborhood spirit medium. Got it. Check it out, Nick. 
success! Now the little girl can dry her tears and get right back to playing. That's great. You need to start Stranger Jack to roll. Yeah, of course we're not. I mean, why would we want some Stranger? Well, you don't look straight yourself, but those clothes you wear sure are weird. <laughs> I think we should go. Maya, we can't give up now. After all, we just saw the puzzle. Okay, name one thing strange about my clothes. One! I could give you a laundry list of things. Anyway, we'll go and get your sister. You just wait here for a while, okay? Okay. Why, Cecil? Why did you let go of my head? Run like, off! Sorry, sis. I just... At least we're back together now, right? <laughs> so what? I could care less what way you're young. But anyway, from now on, don't keep go running off like that. Got it! Got it, sis. There you go, pal. So, feels good helping people out like this. Even so, that was a tough puzzle. I was wondering if we actually saw the first second there. Yeah, but we have so... Yeah, but we so have what it takes to make. I can see us going pro at this whole puzzle solving thing, just like the professor. If we get stuck on a case, we could always consider changing jobs. I'll think about it. Okay, now that we've done that, off to the alchemist's house. So this is our building residence. Definitely looks like an outfit house. I've never seen plans like these before. So what we do now? Just because the owner's deceased, we can't exactly go barge in. Mm -hmm. But have you noticed just how well kept this yard is? Looks like someone is still living here. Someone has definitely been up here. That's for sure. Hey! Who's that over there? Well, I know for one thing there are three coins right here. One is in the flower vase. Oh, wait, there's one right here. Sun symbol, bird's nest in the chimney, and a bush along the right stone wall. My sincere apologies. I'm afraid medkins are no longer being provided here. Eh? Did you not come here for medkins so or some kind? Um, no, we didn't come here for that. We're here to investigate the incident, the one involving Sir Beldu. Oh, forgive me if I'm mistaken, but... You do not look like members of the Knights of the Inquisition. I'm Phoenix Wright, attorney at law. And you, I'm guessing you live here? Indeed, my name is Jean Griel. I was butler to the late Master Beldu. Well, Mr. Grail, if you don't mind. I've been told that the incident involving your master was shrouded in mystery. Has it got something to do with the Great Witch Bazelli? 
we're trying to investigate that at the moment. The Great Witch is her. Am I right in supposing that you are defending Espella Cantabella? Well, actually, yes. Yes, we are. So, you know Espella, do you? That goes without saying. Everyone around here knows her. Do you think you can help us when we're here looking for leads? While he was alive, the Master taught me the value of investigating the truth that governs the natural world. If you, too, are investigating the truth, then it would be against his teachings for me not to cooperate with you. Would you both like to come in? We can discuss the matter further inside. That would be great. Thank you, Mr. Grail. Oh, spoken like a true man. It's pretty cool guy, isn't it? What is this one? This is the room that Master Belder kindly provided as my accommodation. So, uh, is this the room where the incident took place? That would be the Master's study. It is the room right next door. However, the state of the room has been carefully preserved since the incident months ago. As such entry into the room is currently not permitted. Really? Bomb room? Is that by order of the Knights of the Inquisition or the Knight? Yes, and as I have lived with Master since in any age, they also decided it would be only fitting me to stay on and keep the place in order. So you've been looking at that place ever since Sir Bildi passed away? Yes, and that is correct. And now then, is there anything further you wish to discuss? I want to get these keys, these coins. Jeez, why am I saying keys? You know I haven't played this game in like weeks. Okay, so... One's in the flower rings. There are glasses in the cupboard. Three are in scrolls. As I mentioned a moment ago, I know very little about this matter. As a matter of fact, it might be better to ask the game this I can tell you about one thing, though. Namely, what occurred before the incident. Before the incident. Yes. It was three months ago, around the time that Master Belgium was murdered. We were on our way back from collecting specimens for research, and it was already into the small hours of the morning. There was a thunderstorm on the way, and as the storm drew nearer, we quickly made our way home. He seemed unsettled, as if he was truly afraid of something. After that bell tower appeared, he changed completely. Master Belduk became a different man. Wait a second, did you just say... A 
bell tower appeared? Hey, that explains it. That must be what High Inquisitor Dekla meant when she mentioned an incident involving the bell tower. It meant the meaning of death. To this day, I do not know what the master was so thinking. Do you think he was connected in some way to his death? I think it must have been magic. I mean, for Beltar to just appear like that. Mr. Graham, do you mind if we have a look around? I know that the Inquisitors have already carried out a full investigation, but there just might be a clue or two of some connection to the Great Witch. Hmm. Well, I suppose, providing I am allowed to accompany you, of course. There's sensitive equipment everywhere, and it is my responsibility to take care of it. I understand. We'll be careful. I wonder how the professor and Luke are doing with their visit to the storyteller. Yeah, I'm wondering about that too. Chance to me, Bob Rafia's creator. Let's just hope they don't upset the guy and have some terrible plot twist written about them. I don't look how many things like you that visited the storytelling game. The professor would never let anything like that happen. I've got a feeling they'll come back with some pretty useful leads. We have to do our best to make them. Let's keep up our side of this investigation. You got it, William. We're all in this together. Come on, let's see what we can find. That's the spirit. According to Grail, Sir Beldix Butler, the bell tower appeared up mysteriously after lightning struck one evening. For some reason, Sir Beldix became seriously agitated upon his appearance. The bell tower in the town square is under a continuous guard. Could this be related in some way to the death of the alchemist? Which Bizarra will be tried in court? That will be the other of his fine children, fitting in to tell you my witches and their magic. Am I to believe that this final chapter has already begun? That is correct, but there is no way you can possibly change it. I wonder about that. You see, I gave my word to a young lady. I promised that without fail I would be able to rescue her. If I am not mistaken, the Great Witch Trial will begin in two weeks' time. The same day on which you will hold your next birthday. I believe that you should give us sufficient time to show you. Such a smug countenance. I find it intolerable. I beg your pardon. Two weeks from now, you see. I am afraid that information is out of date. Out of date? What do you mean? My parade will be held. The day after tomorrow, according to the amended story. What? The day after tomorrow? That, that's not fair! Now that's the kind of countenance I want from the characters in my story. What? That's what I do, didn't you know? I decide the fate of characters who have no knowledge of their future. This guy is Tomino. This guy is Kill em All Tomino. To 
would appear that you are not yet fully aware of the Let me see now. Just for fun, I'll write you a little story. A story full of surprises. And of tears. I shall enjoy seeing the emotions of the characters as they play their parts. A story, class. Stories are a fixture of this town. You would be wise to embrace them. Let's see. I think we need a stimulating instinct. We shall have a witch, some witchcraft, and perhaps a little death. Yeah. You can't! Oh, but I can. Let me see. This is a golden opportunity to use the alchemist residence. How about this? Your comrade meets with death by golden curse in the alchemist residence. Hmm. This could be a truly interesting story. Yeah, why? Feel free to act as you wish when playing your role. of a new tragedy, the fox. The victim of a golden curse lies in the dwelling of a user of false alchemy. A man from afar falls to a golden curse, and a woman from afar cries out in grief. The woman is captured, her dark trial begins, the fiery pit Do something, Mr. Wright and his fame will be in danger. There's no time to lose, Luke. Let's go and find him. Right you are, Professor. <laughs> the story has already been written. And no matter what you do, you will not change the result. I do not agree. What we do next can change the future in any number of ways. I'm sure that's what you want. In fact, a naive outburst like that could be a poignant problem. Your words may help to raise the tension and bring a little excitement to my story. You, you monster! Luke! Now's not the time. We need to help Mr. Wright and Maya. Okay, let's go, Professor. Better hurry. Friends that add items. Professor, do you hear the crab and sound coming this way? The sound of a large bird. Perhaps he wants to tell us something. I'll try talking to him and see what he wants. What can we do for you?
otherwise known as Gotcha. Recording, Professor. Hey, that's y'all says that a letter was delivered to the storyteller three months ago. To the storyteller? If that's so, then we can't very well keep it. After all, it's wrong to read letters addressed to someone else. That's what the owl said. But he also said there's absolutely nothing written on the sheets of parchment inside the envelope. Look, Professor. See? I told you plain. A letter with nothing written on it? That is indeed curious. I don't know, thing, Professor. The owl says that this letter was sent by the alchemist. Remember what the storyteller wrote in the story he penned the moment ago. The victim of a golden curse lies in the dwelling of a user of false alchemy. Which probably means the place at which this incident will occur. He's the home of the one who sent this letter. In other words, at the alchemist's house, right, Professor? It appears the address of the sender. Sir Pedro, it's written on the envelope. Which means we had better make our way there immediately. Thanks, Mr. Hood. <laughs> and now we get a blank word. The address on the envelope is somewhere near the town square. Make it in time. I'll take you there, Ron. Yeah, we're near the end of this anyway. Look, my boy, we have the need to rent a steed. <laughs> oh my god, they just they they had to do that, didn't they? Oh my god, they had to do that. I have the need, a mighty need, a mighty need to resist. <laughs> I think you, I think you won, Professor. That will be far quicker than running. Quickly, there's no time to lose. Hey, easy boy! the study. Say, Nick, have you noticed how the color of that wall is different from all the other walls in this room? I think I've investigated enough crime scenes right now to notice something as obvious as that, Maya. I remember too much, but actually there was a small fire here a while ago. It was my fault. The wall ended up a little seamed through the posts. Now that you mention it, there are some signs of a fire on the floor there, too. Yes, that is correct. Anyway, I decided to paint the wall myself. Looks like Mr. Grills. We came here with the deserves and we're looking for him. I let a candle set fire to some dry straw. You know, in my time as a butler, I've never made such a major blunder. Nah, it's not that bad. You're being a little harder on yourself. That's right, it's not so bad. You think that's bad? You should see Nick try and do laundry. Now that's a major blunder. Okay, that was one time. Anyways. <clears throat> Study. While we're here, could you show us around your room alone, Miss Bear? Of course. If it will bring you any closer to finding yourself, be my guest. However, as the Knights of the Inquisition have ordered that the crime scene be left undisturbed, I must ask that you refrain from touching anything while you are in the study. <laughs> 
Sure, we'll be careful. So, that adds us a new place to study. That's an alchemist circle, Maya. We're not in a wheat field. I'm sorry to repeat myself, but please be sure not to touch it. You heard, Maya. That means keep your hands to yourself. No problem. I'll just do the touching with my eyes. With your eyes? Anyway. We have one room we have to check, and then we end this part on the note because the next part is going to be another court room now. So, hit coins. This spherical compass. Golden bulb next to the door. And the books on the floor by the white powder. Looks like a load of white powder has been scattered across on the desk. Um, about this white powder. That's been here since the incident. That's right. Twas just like this when I entered the room on the morning following the incident. I have left it this way ever since. I guess someone must have dropped a container full of some medicine. Please, try not to walk in the room. You may leave footprints. How did you set it? All I want to do is leave a little old footprint all over the place. It'll be like miles here. Oh, I'm sure. The picture on the wall. Hey, that's a pretty little picture over there. Stones are often 
Sergeant Major you have to remove. But I mean they're wearing his pretty knee coat. Such a mysterious color. Oh, this. It's an amethyst. Master Bear Duke asked me to wear it. Amethyst? The amethyst brings about good vibrations in an alchemy sense. Mr. Grego. Oh, I I'm sorry. I was just remembering Master Bear Duke. He gave me this stone and accepted me as his assistant, alchemist. But now, Master, such a symbol of the natural world. <sighs> Seems like Ray Earl really misses him. He must have really respected Sir Hunter. Well, I think we've just about investigated everything we can for now. But we didn't find any leads on the Great Witch. Oh, Mr. Grail. Yes, what is it? Is there anywhere else you can think of where we might find more clues? Uh, let me see. Well, there is a cellar under the study. That's where the master kept his research materials. A cellar under this room? Yes. There's a trapdoor in the floor leading down to the cellar. A room containing Bellevue's research materials. If you don't mind, I'd like to have a quick look at that room. I see very well. If you'll please just wait a moment. <coughs> Sir Bell did study alchemy here, too. I don't see anything missing, like, but there sure is a lot of it. This desk is pretty messy. Got a speck of dust on it. 
I guess Rayo must be keeping it clean. There's a wooden box by the desk. We have all kinds of children. Dolls peeping out of the box. I wonder if it was left by a little girl who was one of the doctor's patients. Sir Bell did carry out research here as well. Plenty of sketches and drawings, nothing to surprise. that is. Seems to have been kept in pristine condition. Well, looks like I've pretty much seen all there is to see down here. The room doesn't seem to have been used much. There's nothing I can see that might provide a lead. I stay here any longer, I might just need a little cover to dust myself. <coughs> Not to mention standing here sighing is kind of funny on my lungs. Maybe it's time I head back upstairs. I should probably see how my is doing. This is the alchemist's house. We have to hurry! You look positively flustered. Sir Bedrick's no longer resident here. You need to go elsewhere for your medicines. Oh no, that will be true. It's a matter of life and death. Life and death, you say? 
If it's so, then I may see, then I may foresee a hit below. Raise up your hearts and sing with Bendy. My bird is cracker, first, second, and third leg. Oh, this must be that rival Mr. Barney was talking about. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to hide. Oh, dearie, dearie me. Professor Layton was turned into a gold statue through witchcraft in the alchemist's residence. How can this be? And I will save. But after all that, I will drop a save like so. And number 34, which we have never found, is sent to Riddell. And next time we will deal with Chapter 4, The Golden Court, Part 1. So, in the next part, we shall begin part one of the Golden Court. Stay tuned, more of Professor Lighten versus Phoenix Wright, right after this. <laughs> 